In this video, I'm going to show you one way of overboarding a ceiling. There's many ways of doing a lot of things in plastering. So this isn't the only way. This is just one variation. And also in this video, I'm also going to show you a little trick on how to not have to take the ceiling rows down. Okay. Not have to disturb it and start getting involved with all the wires and all the electricity. You know, you can just board the ceiling with that. And you'll see, you'll see in the video. Nice little trick for you. You'll enjoy this. We're going to overboard this ceiling. Only because it's not really too exciting to skim over. I don't know if you can see how... Uh, can, you, can you see that, can you? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to overboard it. I mean, we could, we could skim over this. It wouldn't be very fun, but it is doable. But the only thing is, uh, this is like a 19 sort of 10, 19, 20s build. So you can almost guarantee there's lime wash paint under this artex. So we are going to overboard it just because we don't want to deal with, you know, bits coming down and having to scrape it off and just far easier just to overboard it. Before we go any further with this video, I just want to clear one thing up because I don't want people going flipping bananas in the comments section or trying to come back and sue me in the future, right? Artex may contain asbestos white asbestos there's blue there's brown there's a load of different types of asbestos white is the most commonly used in the construction industry and you could sort of say it's the lesser of the dangerous types but it's still dangerous okay it'll still get you in artex there's between two and four percent of it it's not in every type of artex in the 70s they brought out artex that didn't have asbestos in it and there were some that still did, okay? It wasn't completely banned until like 1999 or something. So you need to it, you need to understand that if you're worried about it, get it tested and follow the recommendations. Wear the appropriate masks. If you know, if if you if that's you're concerned about it, then just follow the guidelines. You can go on the HSE website and they've got all the instructions there for you. Now, just know this working with an Artex ceiling. Whatever you do with it, it's non-licensable. You don't need a license to rip an Artex ceiling down if that's what you want to do. You do need a license for some of the more dangerous um, types of asbestos that are in, like some of the roofing sheets and what have you. But just know this, back in the day, it's not just Artex. Them fellas, them little rascals put that asbestos in pretty much everything. They had it in the bricks. They had it in the floor tiles, they had it in the roofing sheets, they were making pipes out of it, they were wrapping pipes in it, it as lagging, they were make. I mean, like, firemen used to wear suits of asbestos in it, they were putting it in ropes, it's in the brake pads of your cars, or it was, it's they flipping put it everywhere, okay, so, yes, there's a bit of it in our techs as well, so just be aware of that, I mean, you don't want to be breathing the stuff in if you can help it, wear the dust mask anyway, just wanted to clear out with you. Let's get on with the video. So the first thing that you need to deal with is the light. Don't really need to get an electrician in. I mean, you can do if you want, if you're a bit worried about it, but really, once you unscrew this thing off here, you've usually got two screws under there, slacken them off, and just pull this rose down a little bit. Um, I mean, come up here and show them this one. Look what... <laughs> This is snapped up, and there's a flipping big bolt. I mean, the things that you find, they're crazy, aren't they? So we'll deal with this anyway, but just imagine that you've just got a nice, normal, complete one of those, and you're just going to drop it down a little bit, and just the wires are going to hold it in. We took the big lampshade off, because you don't want it all hanging on the weight, you know, by the wires. So take everything off and just slacken them off and drop it down. Right, so we've just got the, the big roofing sheet bolt Hope the light fit I mean, hopefully you won't have to deal with broken ones of these that are broken in half, you know, turn the power off if it's snapped in half like this. But the, imagine that's in one piece, that's how you want it. Just hanging down a little bit so you can get your plasterboard. So you can get your plasterboard up behind it, okay? Now, the next thing you need to do, you need to know which way the joists are running. There's a few ways you can find that out. You can go up in the attic if you're upstairs and you can put your head in and you can and just look which way the joists are running or if you um, do a downstairs ceiling you can 
lift a little bit of carpet up upstairs and see which way the floorboards are running. Whichever way your floorboards are running, your joists are going to run the opposite way. Or, if you can't get in the loft and you, you don't want to mess around with carpets and things like that, you'd overboard in the ceiling anyway. There's nothing wrong with making a little hole, you know. Right. Lath and plaster ceiling. I know because the laths are running that way, the joists are going to run that way. If it was a plasterboard ceiling, you could look straight through the little hole that you've made at the floorboards above from below. You just shine your little camera phone and you see the floorboards. And whichever way the floorboards are running, you know, the joists are running the opposite way. But for the main part now, we now know that the joists are running this way. So all we have to do now is locate them and mark them off on the wall. Okay. So we've just chopped along and we've found a nail in the lath. So I know behind that nail there's going to be a joist there. So, take your pencil, yeah, mark it on the wall. Don't mark it on the ceiling because once the plasterboard's on the ceiling, you're not going to be able to see it. So you mark them off on the wall. That's where the joist is. I mean, if you can, if you can dig in and find. If you can find both sides of the joist, you know, then you, that's even better. Once you've found, this is the messy bit, doing it this way, but it's quite fast and easy. Find one, find the, then find the next one. Once you've found two, you can measure them apart and you'll pretty easily find all the other ones there. They'll all be about the same distance apart. So, There's another one. Now, this can be done with screws. You can just get a little screw gun and just literally just keep putting little screws in. Put the screw in, back it out, put the screw in, back it out until you find the joist. You can do it that way. I mean, <clears throat> it takes longer. That's the only reason I do it this way because it's a little bit faster. If you're panicking about the ceiling, you know, the dust and all that, then wear the dust mask. I mean, I'm probably not the best advocate for one of those. I've never seen to flip and be wearing them when I'm doing this, but I mean, you should wear them. So, don't. 15. Right, so I think it's going to be roughly about here. There it is. There's the nail. Right, what I've just said then, there's the nail. What I mean is, as I've knocked the top layer of plaster off the lath, I can see the nail in the lath, which means that's where the joist is. They've nailed the lath to the joist, so if you spot a nail, you know there's a joist behind it. You can use the screw method. You can put a, a little screw in the ceiling and keep working your way along until you can sort of feel it hit a joist. The problem is, when you go over a lath and plaster ceiling, you could be screwing to a lath, so you think you're hitting the joist, but you're not. You're just screwing into the, the little thin timber strips, which it's not really ideal to screw your plasterboards to them because you're adding a lot of weight to them. They're only little wisps of wood. So ideally, I'd try and find all the joists. Yeah. 15. 15. Give me one right at the end. Yeah. Yeah.
There's the nail. Uh, now again, you might not have bath and plaster. If you find the lathes and you can just see the nails, you know where the joists are. If it's a plasterboard ceiling, you're just gonna see the joists anyway, aren't you? A lot of fellas try and just hit the screws into the lathes, but really, you know, they just overboard the ceiling and sort of put screws anywhere, hoping they're gonna catch these little timber strips. It's doable like that, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. We always find the joists and just screw straight into the joist. Don't assume either that your joists are gonna run straight, especially in older houses. So I would recommend finding them at the other side of the ceiling as well, or if there's a slope just before the slope, because it won't be the same joist that goes like that. They're usually nailed to the side of them and they do switch sides, so don't assume. But first of all, find the joists both sides of the room or just before the slope. Once you've found them, mark them off, you can chalk line them through then or you can hold a ruler up and put a pencil like, like we're going to. Um, and then you slope apart, your joists will be nailed to the side. Wherever that joist is, it'll either be on the left or it'll be on the right. Don't assume they're all the same because sometimes they do switch. If there's something in the way, the joiner may have just put the joist to the other side with their own little ones, you know? Now, I know that this is a little bit messy doing it this way. And some people will say, you know, you can you can do it without disturbing the ceiling with little stud finders. Like we tried it, we tried to make that work for, for a long time using a stud finder. But the thing is, in older houses especially, there's going to be all sorts of stuff in that ceiling. And your little stud finder, I mean, some of this plaster's on really thick and it just wouldn't find the stud. Then it's going to be finding all sorts of things. So I've been picking up everything, you're going to think there's millions of studs up there. There'd be, you have know, more of a nightmare, so I'm just telling you what works the fastest and the easiest way is to make little holes and find the joists inside of the room, mark them on the wall, and chalk line them through. So when your plasterboard goes up here, you know where the joist is each side because you can see the chalk line. If it's butted up to the wall, you still know where the joist is because it's marked off on the wall. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna cut the first board now. <clears throat> you always want your cut edges to sort of go towards the walls, so try and cut them so that the, you know, your nice factory made edges are going to be in the middles of the ceilings, it'll just be a neat job for you. And on this first board that we're going to do, I'm going to show you how you get around that situation when there's a light in the ceiling and you try to overboard it. Because <clears throat> you can have all that tucked down, so you can just poke it through a nice little neat hole, but if you're not competent with electrics and you've got to get an electrician then it's all added expense and time and all the rest of it. So I'll show you a nice little easy way to overboard a ceiling and, uh, and not have to take that down to be able to do it still nice and neat. So the board's cut to size. That board's going to fit there, it's going to land half on that joist. <clears throat> Now we've got this to deal with. So, we'll measure this out. 48 and a quarter. 18. Now, you're going to mark it off on your plastic board. And I'm going to use a pencil. Usually, I'd use a knife, but I'm going to use a pencil so that you can see what's going on here. That's where my light is, that's where it comes out the ceiling, right? Now, because we've marked the joists off, what we can now do is measure where the joists are. Get half on the joist, you want to be measuring half on them. 45 and a quarter, 58 and three. You'll see this bit now. land on this plastic board. So just mark these off. And 
be a joist here and a joist there. Now what you want is you want to do a square on your board and you want your light to be in the corner of the square. So I can find the other joist and, and, and put a square there but the light to be in the middle. This will all make sense now. You want your light to be in the corner and there's a reason for it, I'll show you. <coughs> Okay, so we light it, I made a square and they're going to land half on the joist. That square is going to come off and just so you know which way the board fits back in, just pull a little mark so your square goes back in the right way around. I'm going to cut this out now and I'll show you how it works. Three your lighters. Keep that safe. Okay. Well, once you've tacked both sides of your board up, you want to get about three or four screws in the middle. So they're all, you know, roughly so far apart. You get about five or six screws in each, sort of round on an 84. You should be doing anyway. Um, now, remember this is already broke. We haven't, we haven't broke that. And once this board's screwed up, I'll show you what, how we deal with the rest of this then. Another little tip for you, if you're putting a screw in and you go there, say, let's just say I missed that screw, yeah, don't just start going mad with your screw gun, the joist might have a little bow in it, right, so what you want to do is instead of just starting firing screws everywhere, right, your joist is going to be about two inches wide, so don't go wider than two inches in case you go past it, yeah, just put a screw there, an inch that way, if it's not there, go an inch that way, if it's not there, go another inch that way, if it's not there, go another inch that way. Work your way out systematically until you find it. Too many times I've had lads on jobs and they just, <laughs> looks like it's been hit with shotguns, a million screws everywhere, not one of them's in the joist, they're all sticking out and wrong, so just work methodically and you will find it, you know. Alright, so the board's up. Now, remember, you've cut this little hole you know exactly where the light is, so you mark it off on your board, you measure to the nearest two joists, you made a nice decent sized little square so you've got a piece to work with. Cut the corner off that to make way for the cables. That'll just slot back in there now. It'll screw up to the joists either side of it. And that is a way of not having to take this thing down. Now, Couple of extra little um, things to consider. We know, because the customer knows exactly where all the pipes are in this house, that there's nothing above this ceiling. But if you don't know, before you start firing screws into any ceiling, make sure you know where the fuse board is to turn the power off if you hit a live wire. And make sure you know where the stop clock is to turn the water off if you hit a water main, the gas, the gas main, yeah, and have a bucket 
outside the room ready, a big mixing tub, so that if you do screw in and you manage to hit a water pipe, I mean, you only want to use the screws like 50 mil at the most. You don't want to be using screws like this because if there's, if there's pipes in the middle of the joist, you don't want to hit them. But if you do manage to hit them, what you need to do straight away is just rip that board off, smash a hole through the ceiling so the water can come straight down and put your bucket underneath it, then go and turn the stock cock off. I hope that never happens to you, right? But in the real world, sometimes people put pipes in crazy places. It is a potential hazard. I mean, you don't want it to happen, but that's the way you need to go about it. Now, boarding around the slope, what I do now is measure as far as the ceiling goes flat up to that slope, and I'll cut that. Then we'll put a little strip in where the slope is, and then we'll carry on a nice flat board again down there, and you'll see that in just a second. When you put your plasterboard and you snap it and you cut the other side, see down here, don't cut right the way through the board at the very end, leave a little tab of paper not cut, because otherwise when you're down here, that end of the board will be flapping around, so I just leave a little bit of paper still attached to keep that board still at the end there, and then you'll see then once it's, uh, once it's cut, just a little pop of the other end just rips it off. And that's it, the ceiling is nice and neatly overboarded. You can see the little two inch strip in the curve just to make that curve up. And uh, that's it, job done, nice and neat. Now, a couple of little things on overboarding ceilings. You may be tempted to go out and buy 3 8 plasterboard. A lot of plasterers like to use 3 8 boards to go over the top of an old ceiling. But what you've got to take into account is 3 8 boards are very thin. Right? So yeah, it's lovely, nice and light to go over the ceiling, but gravity means that they're pulled down. So if the joists are a wide span, your boards will sag because they're not thick enough. They've got no rigidity in them to hold them straight. So I wouldn't really go out and want to start buying 3 8 boards for every job. In fact, I would recommend just use half inch boards. You, you won't really go wrong with half inch boards or 12.5 mil if you're talking new money. Which brings me to another point. You'll notice I work in Imperial uh, in inches rather than in metric and the simple reason is there's less numbers to remember if you go up on a ceiling you're measuring a board it's got an l out of it and you've got like four lots of numbers to remember and they're all in the flipping hundreds and thousands then it's, it gets a bit complicated so at least if you just stick in inches it's uh it's easier and make sure as well that you, your little oppo that's with you your workmate make sure he's on the same page as you when it comes to numbers so he knows what half an inch is quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch yeah so we sort of go down to eighth of an inch whenever you cut a plasterboard whatever the exact size of the hole is make it an eighth of an inch shy and it will fit in nice and snug you know um you don't really need to go less than an eighth of an inch but if you did those little bits on the tape measure there um you know <laughs> and we used to call them uh, my dad's mate used to say to him uh you know 27 and a that's dick which meant one of those little lines <laughs> and uh he would to say to us um you know and, it, and if it's a little tiny bit more than that it could be a dark hair and that's dick and a dark hair which is just a little bit <laughs> or a blonde hair that's smaller but anyway <clears throat> yeah trust me on the um on the imperial use inches it's easier screws screws don't be buying screws like this because you're gonna hit a pipe or a, or a cable and you know, they're normally drilled through the centre of the joists if they're not on the top. Um, you don't want to be going too deep into the ceiling. So, you know, you've got half-inch plasterboard and the old ceiling's going to be about half-inch. So, and you want to sort of go into your timber about an inch as well. So, you know, 55 mil screws are usually about spot on for overboarding. Oh, and collated screw guns as well. Um, I do own collated screw guns. And what that means is you get your screws and they come on strips. So you don't have to put one one at a time. They just go into like a, 
like a machine gun, you know, and it just fires them in as many as you want. I don't use collated screw guns when I'm overboarding ceilings. The more hassle than the worth in that situation because you can't back the screws off. So when you can't see the joists and you're relying on, you've marked the wall and you've chalk lined the ceiling so you can sort of see where the joist's going to be. One board's going to be butted up to the wall and then where it's not touching the wall, you're going to see your chalk line so you'll be able to see where the joist is, you see. When you put a screw in there, if you're slightly out and you miss the joist with a collated gun, then you've got to finish off and go and get a screwdriver or another screw gun to back them screws out. I don't leave any screws to the end. If we put a screw in wrong, we take it straight back out and put it back in where it needs to be. So I just use a normal little impact driver. I use an impact driver, not a normal screw gun, because the impact driver is a bit shorter, which comes in handy when you're reaching over the top of kitchen units and things like that, you know, if, or over the wardrobe. If it's a bit tight and they can't get it out of the room. So... <clears throat> Take that into account. Collated guns are great, but they're fantastic on brand new work where you can see exactly where every joist is. If you don't know where the joist is and you smash that light, you can put holes through the board. Not, not you, because you're a professional, no doubt, but you know, if you've got a young lad with you, he can cause all sorts of flipping nightmares with a collated gun if he can't see the joists. So maybe just save them for your extensions or your new builds, whatever you're working. Oh, and as well, I just... I want to sort of say like a little apology as well. Um, I'm, I've got so much stuff that I want to get on video for you. I've got so many ideas and different things that I want to try and cover. And believe me, this is like the tip of the iceberg of all the stuff that I need to get on this channel. Um, and what's happening is I feel like the quality of the videos is sort of suffering because... I'd love to spend a lot more time editing and polishing and tweaking the videos and making them perfect. But the thing is, it just takes me so long to do. I mean, half of that is because I'm flipping useless with the equipment. But, you know, it just takes too much time editing the videos perfectly. So I'm trying to do the best I can with a little bit of time. You know, I'm, I'm flipping working full time. I'm, I'm pricing work after work. You know, I've got the, the, the little four and a half month old little fella, he's in there, you know, flipping, squawking, going crazy, driving his mum insane. So, and I've got three daughters, so I'm I'm quite a busy guy, you know, and I've, I've been staying in this little man cave here editing videos. And, you know, I'm getting all sorts of flipping here when I go in the house. So, listen, I do apologise if the videos aren't of the highest quality at the moment. I'm, it's just because I'm trying to get all this information out to you. I suppose once the channel sort of rounded out and, and I'm covering each aspect of plastering, I can go back and, and make, you know, a lot better videos, you know, on, on better jobs that demonstrate things better. But for now, I'm just trying to... People are asking me questions how to, you know, how to do this and how to do that, and I'm just trying to cover everything. So I've got all the main sort of boxes ticked. Bear with me. Bear, I'm, you know, I'm new to all this. Bear with me. Now, all I will say, though, is if you've enjoyed this video and you appreciate all this tips and information that I'm trying to get across to you and it's going to help you in one way or another and you want to show your appreciation and buy me a pint, there's a link in the description. You can send me a beer and I'd much appreciate it, but there's no obligation. That being said, if your next question is, ooh, how do we skim an Artex ceiling without having to overboard it, that'll be covered in this video here. And whilst you're looking at that, thinking on whether to click on it, because you actually have to press on the screen just there to make that work, um, I'll just quickly say to you, if you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. If you think it can help someone else, give it a share. But whatever you choose to do, thanks for watching, kiddo.